Whether you are a Kindergarten or an established Destiny veteran, sometimes it's hard to keep up with what weapons and subclasses are the strongest to use in the Crucible. And with a completely brand new subclass with all brand new perks coming in Beyond Light on November 10th, I thought it might be helpful to rank our Warlock subclasses into a tier list to better understand which subclasses will help you succeed in the Crucible. Welcome back to the channel, my name is Man of Cole, and today, let's talk about the best Warlock subclasses to use in PvP. So in my best hunter subclasses video, I asked you guys down in the comments if you would like me to do a tier list for Warlocks and Titans. The response was an overwhelming yes. So keep in mind, this hunter main is stepping into some fragile territory. So if there is a ranking that you disagree with, or you think that it needs to be higher or lower, keep in mind, I don't spend nearly as much time playing Warlocks and Titans as I do with hunters. If you think a subclass needs to be higher or lower, let me know down in the comments section. All right, so just to reiterate from the last video, there are three things I took into account while making this tier list. The first thing is that I'm not taking into account the use of any exotics. This is just a straight up ranking of the subclass by itself. There are obviously exotic armor pieces that can enhance some of these subclasses, some being better than others. I just want to provide a, a raw review slash ranking of the subclass as it is. The second thing I want to mention was that some subclasses become more effective the higher the individual player's skill is. These rankings are going to reflect the average PvP player's experience, though I will give an additional ranking based on the subclass's potential with higher skilled players. And the last thing is that all of these subclasses have the exact same class ability and jumps. So no matter which subclass you decide to choose, you will always have the choice of either a healing rift or an empowering rift. And for jumps, you will have strafe glide, burst glide, or balance glide. Also, just keep in mind that all of these rankings are only in relation to all of the other warlock subclasses. These rankings do not reflect how I would rank them against Hunter or Titan subclass. These are just in relation to the other Warlock subclasses we are going over today. With that being said, let's jump into our first subclass, Voidwalker. Our grenades for the Voidwalker subclass are Vortex Grenade, Axion Bolt, and Scatter Grenade. Not terrible options here by any means, though Axion Bolt is probably the most preferred option, with Vortex being the next most desirable. There are definitely exotic pieces that can enhance these, but again, we are not taking any exotics into account for the rankings of these subclasses. Top Tree Voidwalker is Attunement of Chaos, and in this subclass set we get Chaos Accelerant, Bloom, Cataclysm, and Entropic Pull. In my opinion, this is definitely more of a PvE subclass than it is a PvP. Don't get me wrong, there can surely be some people that use this in PvP and use it effectively, but just ranking this subclass set on its own without any help from exotics doesn't give me a ton of confidence with its lethality. Bloom is a pretty nice mechanic in PvE and can see some usefulness in PvP when playing 6v6 modes. But unless enemies are super clumped together, you won't get the opportunity to see Bloom's effectiveness. With that said, I'm placing this subclass set in the D tier with the potential to be placed in the C tier. Like I said, I'm sure there are people out there who can use this subclass effectively in PvP but I'm guessing they're getting a lot of help from some exotics to do so. There are certainly going to be better options moving forward. The next subclass set we will go over is Bottom Tree Voidwalker, Attunement of Hunger. In this subclass set, we have Devour, Feed the Void, Insatiable, and Vortex. I gotta say, I'm a big fan of this subclass. I think this subclass set has a lot of potential on both lower and higher skilled players. The synergy we get from Devour, Feed the Void, and Insatiable is probably the only of its kind within the game. And as I mentioned in my last video, I am a huge fan of perks that are constant. And with the Devour perk, we have the potential to heal ourselves after getting a kill, which is very useful, obviously, because having full health is ideal. But especially in 6v6 modes, when you are likely to get third partied by another person after you get done killing an opponent. So by getting full health as soon as you finish off an engagement, you are immediately putting yourself back into a fair fight. I'm going to be placing this subclass in the B tier, with the potential to be put in the A tier. Like I said, I see a lot of potential with this subclass, especially with the type of synergy it has with itself. And in the right hands, this subclass can stand up there with the best of the best. The last Voidwalker subclass is the Middle Tree, Attunement of Fission. This super is different from our traditional Nova Bomb, as our super for this subclass set is Nova Warp. We also get Atomic Breach, Handheld Supernova, and Dark Matter. Nova Warp allows us to teleport short distances using the melee button, and then erupting into an energy explosion. This explosion can be triggered multiple times as long as there is super energy remaining. So we basically go from an instant super like Nova Bomb to a roaming super like Nova Warp. This subclass set used to be one of the most broken subclasses in the entire game and for quite a long time. Not only did the super have an absurd amount of range to it, but don't even make me re-experience the trauma of handheld supernova. 
The one hit kill melee grenade combo of handheld supernova was one of the most frustrating things to run into when playing PvP. Luckily, it has since been adjusted and is now a little easier to counter, and I see it being used significantly less than it was before. This is still a pretty decent subclass though. I'm going to place this subclass set in the C tier with the potential to be put in the B tier. Still a shadow of what it used to be, but like I said, it still has some lethality if used correctly. Let's move on to our next subclass, Stormcaller. For Stormcaller's grenades, we get Arc Bolt, Pulse Grenade, and Storm Grenade. All three grenades are actually pretty solid for PvP, though Arc Bolt probably sees the most usage out of the bunch. Both Storm and Pulse Grenade are actually pretty lethal and can see some effectiveness in both 6v6 and 3v3 playlists, allowing for territory control and denying the enemy team from getting a revive. Top Tree Stormcaller is Attunement of Ions, which gives us Chain Lightning, Transcendence, Arc Web, and Ionic Blink. This is probably going to be the most commonly used subclass set for most Stormcallers. With Chain Lightning and Arc Web chaining both our melee and grenade hits to other nearby enemies whenever we damage someone, this can be very strong in 6v6 modes when you are almost always surrounded by more than one person. Add on top of that Transcendence and Ionic Blink that both improve our super and its duration, I am confidently putting this in the B tier with the potential to be put in the A tier. Though I could probably be easily convinced to move this to the A tier. The only issue I have is that the super requires you to be relatively close to opponents. And all it would take is a well-timed shotgun melee from said opponent to pull you right out of your super. Still a really strong option in PvP. Let's move to the bottom tree storm caller, Attunement of the Elements, which gives us Gale Force, Landfall, Rising Storm, and Arc Soul. The two most notable perks in this subclass are Landfall and Arc Soul. Landfall adds some variety to our super usage, making it a little more usable when in a situation where you are surrounded by a larger group of people. And I'm certain that most of us are familiar with Arc Soul, whether you realize it or not. You know those little electric orbs that sit on your shoulders and help you shoot stuff if you stand in a rift? Yeah, that is all thanks to this perk and this subclass. It's not particularly strong, but what it can do is also be used as sort of an alert for enemies that may be in your vicinity but you cannot see. Obviously pushing out as much damage as possible is always going to be good, but by itself, Arc Soul is just kinda meh. Overall, I'm placing this subclass set in the C tier with the potential to make it into the B tier. Nothing crazy good, but there is some potential synergy with our rifts charging faster and Arc Soul giving us additional damage output. Lastly, let's talk about Middle Tree Stormcaller. Attunement of Control. For our super, we get Chaos Reach, which fires a long-range, intense beam of arc energy and can be deactivated early to reserve super energy. We also get Ionic Traces, Pulse Wave, and Ball Lightning. For all you weebs out there, this is going to be your subclass. If you've ever fantasized about going full Kamehameha Goku style on someone, this is where you can get your fix. In my opinion, this is probably the most unique subclass set that we have in the whole game. I mean, seeing Chaos Reach in action is one of the coolest things to witness. Unless you're on the receiving end of it, in which case you're probably raging. However, this super is fairly easy to both counter and escape from, as you are not really able to roam around. You're basically just stationary after activating your super and hoping people don't just hide behind walls or run away. I'm also not a fan of perks that sometimes activates when you perform a specific mechanic, like Ionic Traces does. Ionic Traces states that arc kills sometimes create Ionic Traces, sparks of raw energy that travel back towards you and can be collected to recharge abilities. Again, not a huge fan of a sometimes perk, which is why I'm currently placing this in the C tier, without any real movement for potential, so the potential is going to stay in the C tier as well. There are certainly worse subclasses, but this is clearly not anything better than an average subclass in my opinion. Before we get into our last one, if you found this video informative, educational, or entertaining, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I make Destiny videos every single week, so if you do end up subscribing, make sure you click that bell as well. It will let you know when my videos get posted. All right, so our last subclass is going to be Dawnblade. For Dawnblade, we get Solar Grenade, Firebolt Grenade, and Fusion Grenade. Fusion Grenade is kind of below average right now with Firebolt being just a little bit better. Our best option right now is probably Solar Grenades as the burning after effect can cause some significant damage if you end up getting caught in it. Not to mention it continuously burns you completely stopping your health from regenerating and also putting you at risk if you're in a 1v1. Let's start with Bottom Tree Dawnblade which is Attunement of Flame. In this subclass set we get Igniting Touch, Faded for the Flame, Everlasting Fire, and Phoenix Dive. A couple of these perks on paper seem like they should be very strong. Both Faded for the Flame and Everlasting Fire are meant to benefit our super, Daybreak. Faded for the Flame indicates that Daybreak projectiles seek targets as they travel and, upon impact, 
launch a streak of deadly flames while everlasting fire states that killing an enemy with daybreak extends its duration. Again, on paper, these look like some solid perks, but in reality, the super is already one of, if not the best super in the game. Its tracking is already pretty forgiving in terms of hit registration, and it is still one of the longest lasting roaming supers in the game. Our other two perks are both kind of meh in PvP. Causing enemies to explode after you melee isn't really useful, and Phoenix Dive is a very niche mechanic, and one that I don't think is particularly ideal for the Crucible. I just don't think a perk that forces you to be in the air and descend in order to receive a benefit is a very good perk. We are most vulnerable when we are in the air, and with Warlocks especially because of their glide. I'm not a big advocate of this subclass, which is why I'm placing it in the D tier with some potential to move into the C tier. Let's move to Middle Tree Dawnblade, Attunement of Grace. For Attunement of Grace, our super changes to Well of Radiance, where you slam your Dawnblade sword into the ground, creating a large rift that grants healing, 20% damage resistance to other guardians, and 25% damage empowerment to you and allied guardians. We also get Divine Protection, Guiding Flame, and Benevolent Dawn. This subclass is about as close to a support class as Destiny has ever gotten, with all of the perks in the subclass providing some kind of buff to our teammates. Whether it is providing a place to regenerate health or gain increased weapon damage, this subclass is here for all the supports. However, in the current meta of the game, there isn't much use or need for a strictly supportive subclass. One of the shining lights for this subclass, and one that not a lot of people know about, is that the slam animation when you activate your Well of Radiance actually behaves like a Titan Slam would. So if you were to activate it in a close proximity to an opponent, it would actually kill them. This subclass is probably more effective in 3v3 playlists or any playlists that have an objective that you can just post up with your Well of Radiance. I'm going to place this subclass in the C tier with the potential to be put in the B tier. Again, I do think this subclass actually has some playability in certain playlists, and the super can be used in some of those panic situations to kill an opponent. And lastly, let's talk about Top Tree Dawnblade, Attunement of Sky. In this subclass set, we get Winged Sun, Heat Rises, Icarus Dash, and Swift Strike. I don't think I really need to say much about this subclass, because if you have ever encountered a Dawnblade Warlock in the Crucible, it has probably been this subclass set. One of the main perks this subclass set provides is Icarus Dash. If you play Destiny 1, mechanically, this would feel extremely similar to the old Titan exotic chess piece, Twilight Garrison. Icarus Dash allows Warlocks to dodge while in midair. If used correctly, this gives a huge boost to movement speed and allows for some very crafty engagements. One person I highly suggest you watch on Top Tree Dawnblade is Panda. Panda is widely thought of as one of, if not the best Destiny player right now on PC, and his main was a Top Tree Dawnblade. I highly recommend checking out some of his gameplay. Not much else to say here, but I'm putting this subclass in the A tier, sitting atop the rest of the Warlock subclasses. So, with all of our subclasses covered, what are your thoughts on the list? Do you think there are some that need to be switched around? Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. I do plan on making a Titan subclass tier list as well, so make sure you are subscribed to the channel so you can be notified when that video goes live. Links to my Twitch channel as well as my Twitter and Discord are also in the description box below. If you're looking for a Destiny clan with some active members, feel free to join our clan. Link to that is also down below. Thank you all very much for watching, a positive rating is always appreciated, and as always, we'll see ya.